Welcome back, everybody. That's a canistel right there from Farah. That's the one that's planted over the top of our dearly departed rabbit. It's looking quite well, but that's not what we're talking about. Today, we are gonna go take a look through the garden. Wow, look at that, the lens goes out. Check this out. Isn't that beautiful? So we've got cassava, tanya, which is an edible elephant here, zinnias to bring in the pollinators and just because it's my favorite flower. And then we have, look at this. This is one of those excellent big pawpaws that we planted, amaranth. And then you'll notice I've got my bananas creating an extra layer in between. This is a different variety of cassava right here. Note the red coloration as compared to these much more green ones over here. More tanya. Beautiful Cavendish banana coming in here. Like that looks so good. I mean, since the rain started just a, like a week and a half ago, everything has absolutely gone nuts. So over here, we've got a little disturbance going on. We've got some yams that are waiting to be planted. That's cool, isn't it? Come on, focus, focus, no edits. All right, so right here, <laughs> yep, beans. So there's beans and then we've been digging the yams out of these beds. These guys were already here and we found them because they keep putting up shoots. So I told my kids, look, I'll give you a buck a pound if you dig them up. Ain't nobody got time for that. There's a surviving tomato. More amaranth. Corn here. Dry season corn. It's kind of sad, but it's still making corn. More beautiful zinnias. So these are the former tomato beds. This is the last of the chocolate pear. This one has survived. Out survived the other ones. My kids like the variety. I didn't find it to be particularly productive, so I didn't reproduce it. Look at this. This is from seed, folks. You remember I came out here and planted seeds, and I planted transplants that I had started from seed around the same time. More corn coming in over here. This is a banana variety. Let me take you around here. So you can see it's written on the side. Dwarf Namwa. So that is a new banana variety for me. Check this one out. This is a variegated plantain variety. Isn't that cool? So down at the base here, I have these little trellises going. They're actually too small, but I was in a hurry because it was getting dark. And I may have to put something higher later, but you'll see this is a different variety. This is a prickly yam variety. I'm not sure of the species. I just know that it's prickly. These guys are coming up. These were planted a couple of weeks ago, and they're already starting to grab really good root crop. Now these are the cassavas here from last year. These guys are almost ready to be harvested, but I want them to fatten up a little bit. Look at this. Little peppers. Any peppers? It's pepper. Come on, pepper. You're really not showing off well. This corn is ready. We're going to have corn on the cob for dinner tonight. Nope, we've got some more pak choy. Another banana variety here. This is the last of the Pantano Romanescos. Very, very good tomato. Not particularly productive in the tropics. They mostly died from disease, as is their want. A little tobacco right there. And you note here, this is a Lucana leucocephala. This, this is a one that came back here. I'm just gonna let it grow until it gets a little taller and then I'll chop and drop it. This yam sprung up all on its own and it, I was just like, well, you look like you're vigorous. I'll just give you a steak. This area here, we've been kind of feeding up with some manure and we threw down some seaweed, as you can see in here. I mean, this whole set of former tomato beds, we figured they were probably in, in need of some care and so they all got that, but we planted beans in here. Little beans, beans. So these areas, you know, you gotta leave some sunlight for your annuals. These areas we cleared the corn and stuff out of 
and the old tomatoes, and now they're, they're doing that, being put into beans for a bit. This bed is being put into okra. See those little okras? And now, as I get weeds, like this is a weed growing in between, this weed is now going to feed those peppers. Those are jalapeno peppers right there. So this here, another variety of banana I stuck in. Note the little okras, one, two, three, four, and then note in the middle, I stuck in a handful of papaya seeds, and here we go. Look at them all coming up. So I'll see which one of these look the most vigorous after a couple of weeks. I'll trim this group down to maybe three survivors, and then one of those I will select for at the end. This bed here was watermelons. They did not do very well but it's been converted to bananas. And then in between, I have some calamondin and uh, kumquats that I started from seed from the Great North Florida Food Forest Project. And then we've got a few of these tobaccos running through the middle here. This is a, a red variety of banana, very pretty, somebody gave me. Down there, we've got some more papaya coming up. As you come along here, this is my the boundary of my land, star apple. I've got some chaya in a hedge. And then in between, you'll see I planted some pineapple tops and pineapple slips. So the pineapples go running along here. And then I have a few mangoes back here, three in a row I'm trying to maintain as a hedge. We'll see how that goes. It makes my neighbor very nervous. <laughs> I think I make a lot of people nervous. So right in here, look at these. These are the pawpaws that we started from seed on the little hills. I selected out for the best ones. These are females here. This one is a male. So I'm leaving this one male right here to go ahead and pollinate the others. But in between here we've got another, this is a dwarf variety of cassava that makes good roots. And then in between it, it is intercropped with sweet potatoes. And somehow, there's another yam down at the end here. These, these things are ridiculous. They're totally invasive. Look at this. What is this nonsense? Look at that. This guy's just waiting to get planted. More banana. All kinds of varieties. The tire gardens are done. The squash failed to do very well. We got some of the yellow summer squash. But somehow, all of the Z-word squash so the yams are coming up here. They've left dormancy. This is the uh, potato yam. And these are a couple of different varieties down here. They're not particularly happy, but that's because it's been a long, hot, dry season. More yams down here with my Glyrocidia posts. This little bed here has a black Suriname cherry and then Talinum fruticosum. This is a a good edible green, perennial. Some more pak choy, like we care. We're so over pak choy. Edible leaf hibiscus, more of the talinum. This here is a uh, caffert lime. This is a really good, really good seasoning. Very, very good. And we've got another banana back here. And then you'll see my coffees. This is the Coffea Arabica. The rest of them are Coffea Liberica, which is a larger, coarse leaf. Now you see this right here, that's a seedling. These right here were the ones that were planted in from root-bound nursery ones. And so the root-bound nursery ones are really, I don't think they're gonna be as vigorous or as happy as some of these seedlings. Oh look, there's another banana, how'd that get there? Ginger coming up right here. Here's the Coffeo Liberica from Seed, and they just look happier to me. This here is just waiting for ginger to come up. Ginger has a long dormancy cycle. There's some in here, but they haven't come up yet. This area is in transition right now from our previous dry season gardens, and then it's gonna get switched over to other stuff. There's ginger planted through almost all of here. They're just waiting for it to pop up. Now you see here, this is sweet potatoes intercropped with cassava down the center. 
and the sweet potatoes have utterly taken over the path. This is a path right in front of me. The sweet potatoes are probably growing a foot a day right now, which is just nuts. They're, they're really hard to control and keep out of everything else. Here's my horrible, horrible invasive Cocinia grandis back here. I don't want it to escape and go across the road here into the, into the bush because that would be a really bad thing. It is super invasive. It will just choke everything out. There you go. Even when they're small like that, it's perfect. Really good. They're really good cooked. This is a breadfruit that I took the center out. Remember, I'm like a huge cutworm. Look at that. Pretty, huh? And this morning, which made me think, hey, I should film a video for you guys, I was harvesting tobacco. So I'm taking the tobacco out of these guys. I'm letting the tops go to seed, so I have lots of seeds. Actually, I only really need to let one of them go to seed, but they're pretty. So here, stacks and stacks of leaves. I just come out here and nip these off. And then I've got more pawpaw growing in between. And once these tobaccos get chopped down, these guys will do better because they'll get some more sunshine. There's another one right there. And again, these are the ones I started from seed some time ago, which just made little hills in one of my videos. This bed here is becoming the biomass bed for chop and drop material. So, oh no, not this bed here. This is the dump the compost bed. The next one is the biomass bed. I make such a mess, I can't even tell what I'm doing. There's a little pawpaw right there, and then here I've got another Suriname cherry. So this bed is being intermixed with perennials and annuals, so this is going to be a good place for all the predators to hang out and hopefully patrol the gardens, and it'll attract the pollinators. Got some pumpkins that have volunteered from the compost. You'll notice all this trashy compost. Oh, it looks horrible. But this area looked like trashy compost too. Look at this, look at all the fungi. See that? That is so stinking alive. There's so much life in here. Look at that. What is that thing? Oh my gosh, there's a big freaky millipede in there. So there's tons of life in here. This is, look, at, look at this stuff getting decayed into the ground. So this will feed this bed, and I put my perennials in here. Coco Plum from South Florida. The, uh, <laughs> you know, all, the, all these guys here, these are small fruits that I decided to put through here. And they are also surrounded by flowers. And I've got the occasional sprawling tomato. And we got some sunflowers here, which are making seeds right now. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's cool, isn't it? But this is getting super, super, super enriched by dumping our compost buckets in here. And if you don't like the way it looks, you just throw a little bit more mulch over the top. Oh, there we go. Stay. So, you know, this bit's getting converted down here. Here's a lime berry. When this other stuff around it gets chopped and dropped, that lime berry will take off. That has a small edible fruit. It's in the citrus family. Down here, you'll see another small fruit. What's that? There's a mulberry right there, right in the middle. Yeah. So this corn, kind of sad dry season corn, is almost done. When that corn is done, oh, better take that. When this corn is done, it gets chopped and dropped and it's gonna feed the system in there. Now this bed is the biomass bed. So that was my perennial bed. This is my biomass bed. So there's vetiver grass right here. This vetiver grass is a really good chop and drop. It's also really good for erosion control. We've got moringa seedlings coming up. I had stuck in some sweet potatoes here so they're just rambling for now. We'll get a yield in the interim. Ice cream bean, mung beans. I just threw mung beans out here. I had the kids just take some of the pods off of a previous bed that we'd grown. There's our moringas, ice cream bean, and you'll see these little clumps of vetiver grass. This stuff will grow into nice big clumps, and it's a, and it's a quick rotting grass. Feeds the ground. A little more compost. Got a little tobacco in here. But all these ice cream beans, this is Inga. I mean, they get huge, and they make a lot of nitrogen-rich material. So, yeah, I'm mulching. Oh, it's terrifying, isn't it? I'm mulching, but I'm not hauling in mulch after the first year or so. 
it's just so pretty to walk out here. I like the, the craziness of it all. And you'll see more bananas, bananas everywhere. Cassava. Let's come down through here. This is an albizia that's growing back from this stump. So what I'm going to do is select a couple of those and let them grow and then use them for chop and drop. Hey, if it's going to be right there at the edge of my bed, I don't want to kill it. I want to use all that nitrogen rich stuff. So here inside of the tobacco, that beautiful tobacco, I got to finish cutting these, but I wanted to do the video before I chopped them all. Pretty stuff. I've got more Cavendish bananas mixed in, and there's a Gloricidia sepium. This again is turning into a biomass bed. So I've got a, a biomass bed that that it skips from here to here, and it goes across to the other side of the gardens. But right through here, see there's another pawpaw right there, and when these tobaccos go down, it goes down. This is one of my kids' beds. They're working on it. Look at all that tobacco. Marigold's in the middle there. The kids are going to replant soon. More cassava down through here. More banana. This is a, a narrow bed that I made just to see if I like narrow beds better. Look at those. Gorgeous. These eggplant here are going to seed. Notice how crazy they look now? Lots and lots of seeds coming out of those. Way more than we need. We could plant the entire garden with eggplant. This is the one I'm actually saving for seed on purpose. Note the, the tie on the top. <laughs> look at the little nasty stink bugs and stuff. But the tie on the top says, that one's daddy's, don't pick it. And it's gotten very ripe and hard so it's it's I could probably harvest it at this point this is what they're supposed to look like little tender purple things not big scary hard yellow things and we've got more amaranth coming through here another variety of banana and we're getting jalapenos on the end here so those beautiful jalapenos this banana look at this thing I planted this one this little baby popped up very shortly afterwards. So we've got the mama and the daughter. Good shape. Another moringa in the middle there. Lots of amaranth started from transplants. These are lima beans. Coming right here, doing quite well. And then this is hyacinth bean, which we are waiting on. They take a long time to actually start producing. More lima beans. And you'll note the, uh, the multi-layered thing going on here. This is the edible Dioscoria bulbifera. I have a few of these. These need to get tied up so they can climb through. But here we have our, our floor layer, and then we have our climbers, and then we have some emergent <laughs> tomatoes. More limas. Look over here. I'm going to see limas. Lots of them in here. Tons of them. They're all through here. Lima beans everywhere. And then some tomatoes. And this gets into one of the other kid beds. And there's some basil here. And she's growing tomatoes. And she's growing a type of pepper. Back here, it's like a paprika. And then she's growing. From seed, she grew all of these sunflowers, which look really good. They're going to seed right now. Kids have already been trying them to see if they're good. They're good. Bananas at the end are looking good now that we've got some rain. This is uh, another variety of bean. I think it's a it's a hyacinth or some relative. Somebody gave me a bunch of different varieties. I don't even know anymore. There's a weary weary pepper, which is from Guyana. It's their super popular pepper there. Very uncommon elsewhere. This is uh, Makuna. Purians, the velvet bean, coming through here. Nice little walk through the garden. Happy little place. This is the edible leaf hibiscus. Got a bunch more on the other side. And then I've started putting in new carbon tomatoes in an area where the tomatoes were not grown yet. So there's a carbon tomato, and then I've got a couple of basils because it just seems like the right thing to do. 
and then here comes another carbon tomato, and then a few basils, another carbon tomato. We'll see how they do in the rainy season. That's the big test. A couple different varieties of basil here. There's a purple one. There's another green one. That one's like uh, lime basil or lemon basil. More hyacinth beans. This area right here has got some eggplant transplants that look a little chlorotic and something has been chewing the leaves to bits. I don't know how they're going to do, but we shall see. Yard long beans. These actually somehow came from Indonesia. <laughs> These are actually a super cool type because the, the beans inside are spotted like black and white. Like they look like cattle beans, Jacob's cattle, except they're a yard long bean. So you can see down this bed, look how pretty that is. And if we come over here, it's the remnants of the okra, it's almost done. They're, uh, they've been in for a long time. They're time, to, time for them to get chopped and dropped. And more bananas, pawpaw. What I try to do is put something that's emergent, taller, you know, banana, pawpaw. So they can kind of alternate with the other stuff. Here's another pawpaw. There's a banana. So they'll they'll go up. And meanwhile, I've got you know sweet potatoes and other things growing underneath them. A couple more carbon tomatoes here. Another banana. And then here is more of the edible leaf hibiscus. Got basil growing down here. Longevity spinach, Gynura procumbens, and and right through here. More of this nitrogen fixing albizia coming back from a stump, so it gets to stay until it's chopped and dropped. And we come right through here. This is the salad garden. There are lots, lots and lots of salad material coming out of here. This, this uh, Abelmoshus manahot, the edible leaf hibiscus. This stuff is like lettuce right off of the shrub. It grows really well. For those of you in Florida, I highly recommend it, particularly in the southern half of the state. This is uh, Musa balbiziana, the wild banana the ancestor of our current bananas, uh, which crossed with Musa acuminata to make our, our common popular bananas today. It's a very small banana with lots of seeds in it. Makes a huge trunk, great for biomass. Got a little coconut I transplanted over here last year. Another little cocoa plum hiding right here. I need to stick a little something around it to mulch it. And then these are some grafted starfruit I planted last year. And you can see they're making lots and lots of starfruit. Aren't those pretty? I love how starfruit just look like like tiny versions of themselves, you know, when they're little. Look at I mean, look at all these little babies. Isn't that neat? Little baby starfruit. Tons of blooms. Look at all that. More carbon tomatoes down here. So I've got two of these guys, and they'll just stay pruned. And they're both in bloom right now. That's that's the big benefit of grafting, is that they can start fruiting when they're short, and then you can just keep them short. Here I put down some cardboard because the weeds are starting to get crazy through here. There's these creeping vines, and so uh, I found a place that has tons and tons of cardboard, so I can help myself now. This is what the vetiver grass looks like when it gets bigger. And this has been cut multiple times. So got more bananas through here. These are some of the first ones I planted. Note the chop and drop. This guy is just flying. It's got a little baby. When we come around here to the burned stump, I stuck in some pineapples. We've got aloe. The aloe is making babies. And there's the Cuban oregano. And another banana right there. And then I, I just always have to defend the edge. I don't want to strip everything out of this ditch. This is a drainage ditch. I like to let the weeds grow in it to, to keep the soil, but it's a constant battle to defend everything from it. You know, like these pineapples. They just like to keep coming and coming and coming. So this is the overview here. It's quite beautiful. And I love how the aisles are starting to get closer together. And see, this is why I have two foot pads, because if I'm not careful, this will close. <laughs> so anyhow, thanks for joining me, guys. I know this is a little bit of a long tour, 25 minutes of tour. 
but I'm quite happy with this. This is the beginning of the rainy season, June 2020 in David the Goods Gardens. Until next time, may your thumbs always be green.